Hi everyone. So in my previous video, we discussed how data can be transferred between an Arduino and a Node MCU via the serial port. And you can find that video by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description down below. Now in this video, we will expand on that by sending the collected data or rather storing the collected data on the cloud. The cloud platform I'll be using is ThinkSpeak by MATLAB. But for different cloud platforms like Firebase or Google Sheets API, the code can be modified accordingly to push that data onto the cloud. So without waiting any longer, let's get right into it. Now, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I'm Chums and welcome to That's Engineering. Right, so the big picture here is that the Arduino is being used to perform some sort of actuation. It can be used for collecting data from a large number of sensors. Or it can even be used for data processing or running algorithms. Right, so the Arduino would send the results of whatever it has processed or the sensor data to the Node MCU via the serial port or a serial connection. The Node MCU in turn would send that data or store that data on the cloud via a Wi Fi connection. On the other hand, data can also be pulled from the cloud onto the Node MCU and then sent to the Arduino to perform some sort of actuation or run some sort of an algorithm. It can be noted that the Arduino is not even needed. You can directly connect the sensors to the Node MCU. Uh, but if you have a large quantity of sensors or a large algorithm to run, the Arduino would be preferable. You can also use this method to link systems together where you would have an Arduino, for example, this one in one location and it can pick up sensor data, send that to the Node MCU and push that to the cloud. And in a completely separate location, you can have this Arduino, which would pull that sensor data from the cloud via the Node MCU and then perform some sort of actuation uh, or some algorithm would run. And this can be done in real time. Moving on, this is the circuit diagram. Now, I've discussed this in the previous video and explained how serial communication can be established between an Arduino and a Node MCU to transfer sensor data. In that video, I was using a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor simply for explanation purposes. So do check that video out. Again, you can find it as a link in the description down below. Now, in this video, we will focus mainly on the code to send data, rather the collected temperature and humidity readings from the Node MCU onto ThingSpeak. So let's have a look at that. So the next step would be to create an account on the cloud platform. Now you can do this by going to thingspeak.com on your web browser and clicking the icon over here. You can then create a ThingSpeak account or a MathWorks account if you don't already have one. I do, so I shall log in. And once you have created your account and logged in, you would come to this sort of a page. So go ahead and click new channel. Now you can give a name to the channel such as test channel and you can even add a description. Right. You can then add your data fields. You have an option of eight data fields as I'm using a DHT 11 temperature and humidity sensor. I will have two fields. The first field for temperature and the second field for humidity. You can then add a bunch of other stuff such as metadata, tags, or even link the channel to an external site. But I'm going to skip all of that and go right to the bottom and save the channel. Right, so once you have created your channel, you will come to this sort of a home page or a dashboard. Now the dashboard by default will have charts for the number of data fields you have created. So in my case, one for temperature, one for humidity. Now, every new data point that is pushed onto the cloud will be dynamically logged onto this chart. 
you can edit the parameters of this chart by clicking the the pencil button over here and you can edit the title the axes colors backgrounds number of results displayed so on and so forth you can even add your own matlab visualizations by coding in the visualizations or by using some of the templates that have been given here such as for line plots or histograms and finally you can even add a couple of widgets such as gauges numerical displays or indicators you can even use the data on the cloud to perform certain matlab analysis now to push data to the cloud there are two main things you need the first thing is the channel id which is given over here and the second thing would be the api key so you can find that by clicking this tab over here so under api keys you have two keys the first one is a write api key which is to push data to the cloud or to write data onto the channel and the second is a read api key to pull data from the cloud or read what's on the channel and if you look at this over here you have api requests so this request is what's used to write data to the channel and you can see that this field has been specified here so you can write the specific data value to that specific field by default it's given as zero but you can change this depending on the sensor data you have collected so just to recap there are two things that are needed one is the api key and the second thing is the channel id now let's have a look at the code right so this is the code for the node mcu i started off by including these two libraries as discussed previously I included the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library. Now this was to allow the Node MCU to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I have also left a link to this library in the description down below. In addition, I included the ThinkSpeak library. Now this was mainly to read data from the cloud. I haven't really used it in this code, but I've just shown it here. So if you wanted to read data from ThinkSpeak, you can use this library, but to push data to ThinkSpeak, you don't necessarily need this library. You can find this library by going to tools, manage libraries, and you can search for ThinkSpeak. So this is the library I have used, ThinkSpeak by MathWorks. Right, I then specified the serial port as discussed in the previous video, and I am using a timer. Now, if you're running your node MCU at continuous operation for long periods of time, it's preferable that delays are not used. An alternative to delays would be to use a timer, which can be created in milliseconds. So it has three variables, a uh, time reading or the previous time reading in milliseconds, the current time in milliseconds, and the period for which you want the timer to exist. 30,000 milliseconds, which is also equal to 30 seconds. I have copied in the API key from the ThingSpeak channel, along with the channel ID. And I have two variables for the Wi-Fi username or the Wi-Fi SSID, which you have, would have to fill this in with your Wi-Fi username and the password. Uh, there's also a variable for the server we will be connecting to, which is api.thingspeak.com. I'm also using two Boolean variables, which I will explain why later on in the code. And then the Wi-Fi client is initialized. So in the setup, practically this function is run wi-fi connect now wi-fi connect that function is at the bottom over here practically it uses this command to allow the node mcu to connect to a wi-fi network so wi-fi dot begin with the input parameters being the ssid and the password uh, you can check the documentation for the esp8266 library when a node mcu connects to a wi-fi it would return uh, a status code and if that status code is WL connected, it shows that the node MCU has successfully connected to the Wi-Fi network. So until this status code is received, it would simply print out a dot on the serial monitor with a delay of 500 milliseconds. So this function here is practically to allow the node MCU to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So in the setup, after the node MCU has connected to the Wi-Fi network, it breaks into the loop. Right, now within the loop, the first thing it does is it gets the current time in milliseconds using this function, millis. It then uses an if statement to check if the timer has expired. What this means is that every 30 seconds, this block of code within the if loop will run. 
and if the timer has not expired it will just skip this and keep running the loop so given the timer has expired every 30 seconds we break into the if loop the first thing it does is it checks to see if the node mcu is still connected to the wi-fi this is because if the node mcu is running for long periods of time there can be signal drops or even power outages so it's advisable that we recheck to see if the node mcu is still connected to the wi-fi network given it has connected to the wi-fi network it will then break into this while loop before i explain this while loop let's have a look at these two functions pass json object and cloud connect so pass json object is right here at the bottom practically this function obtains the sensor data from the serial port placed by the arduino so it creates a json object and it obtains whatever was placed on the serial port if an error is occurred it returns back to the start of the function call otherwise it gets the temperature and the humidity readings uh, which are attributes of the JSON object. It runs a check similar as in the Arduino code to see if the humidity and temperature is either not a number or zero. If so, it returns back to the function call. The second function is cloud connect. Now, this is what's used to send the collected sensor data onto ThingSpeak by creating the API request as seen on the ThingSpeak channel. Finally, it appends this uh, information post string which is created over here so post string practically contains the field number and the data as a string so field one temperature as a string field two humidity as a string it then simply prints the temperature and humidity onto the serial monitor and stops the client right so what happens over here in this while loop is that it would first check if as long as state 2 is false it will keep running this uh, function pass json object so what happens is actually if it runs this function and there is an error or an invalid reading obtained or the humidity and temperature reading obtained is either not a number or zero it would return to the function call so it would keep running this until a valid set of humidity and temperature readings are obtained Given they are obtained, state 2 will be set to true. When this happens, it can break out of this while loop. So this ensures that a valid set of readings are obtained from the serial port, from the sensor, from the Arduino. The second while loop operates on this first variable, first Boolean variable, state 1. So what happens here is it uses this if statement in Cloud Connect to see if it can connect to the API, uh, the ThingSpeak server. If it cannot connect to the server, this state one will not be set to true. So given that it is, it has successfully sent the humidity and temperature readings to the cloud, state one will change to true and it will break out of this main while loop. So what these two while loops ensure is point one, that valid humidity and temperature readings are obtained from the data placed onto the serial port and that the data is successfully sent to the cloud. If not, it will just keep rerunning this function until that happens. I then reset the two states back to false, uh, print that the cloud connection has been successful and this final term here is to reset the timer so that it will run again after another 30 seconds. Right, so that's all for the node MCU code. Let's upload this code onto the devices, run it and see how it works. Right, so I have connected my Arduino and NodeMCU and I have uploaded the codes onto their respective devices. So I'm going to open the serial monitor on the NodeMCU and I'm going to press the reset button on the NodeMCU. So as you can see, it connected to my local Wi-Fi network and after 30 seconds, it will try to pick up the temperature and humidity readings placed on the serial port by the Arduino and then send those readings to ThingSpeak. So let's wait for 30 seconds. Right, so it performed the Wi-Fi check to see if it was already connected to the Wi-Fi, which it was. It received the JSON object with the temperature being 30 degrees Celsius and the humidity being 79% and successfully pushed it to ThingSpeak. 
So let's go ahead and have a look at ThingSpeak. So you can go to private view. And on the charts, you would see the data point. So this was a previous data point and this was just uploaded right now. So let's wait for another, another 30 seconds and you would see the most current data point. Or you would see these two charts dynamically updating themselves. Right, so as you can see, the most recent data point came in over here. We can wait for another 30 seconds to see the next data point. Right, and that was the next data point. So this would keep on going and these two charts would dynamically update themselves with the most current data being pushed to the cloud. Right, so that's all for this video and that's all for pushing data to ThingSpeak. All right, everyone. So that's all for this video. I hope this video helped you and you learned something new and interesting. Now, if you guys have any questions or clarifications on the work we just did, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video and stay safe.